after a few pots of paint, watch me be like, oh, oh. This, this is nice. This is really nice. Today's video is sponsored by Sophie and Toffee's Elsbots. Check the link down below. Use the code NERDY3 for $3 off your first subscription. Hey Grains, today we're going to be checking out how washable is Crayola's washable products. Let's not kid ourselves. They write washable or extreme washable on basically all of their products or at least the majority of it. So we're going to be experimenting by using their markers, their paint, their crayons on so many different surfaces, including my actual desk my act why did you fall why did you feel the need to fall on your own did I tell you it's okay no so excuse me but you sit your butt over there thank you as I was saying I'm also going to be testing it on my wall right behind me over here and on these scribble scrabbles scribby scrubbies scribble scrubby that was pretty challenging to say so it has a kind of a velvety type feel to it. And yes, I will also try it on cloth. And then we're going to measure how clean something can get after we wash it with these markers. Is it doable? Is the question. So whether it's the Pipsqueak markers, which is called washable, the gouache paint, even though this one is silly sense, I'm curious. The ultra clean crayons or the washable watercolors. All of them will get tested. Let me know in the comment section below which one do you think is going to be the most difficult to actually wash. From my experience, even the compatibility of their own product, we used the markers in a previous video with the Scrooby Scrubbles. <laughs> Forgive me, I will not be able to say it right. <laughs> the Scrooby Scrubbles, okay? Let's just call them that. And we had a pretty hard time removing the color from the actual material itself. So Crayola, I am looking at you. I'm watching you very closely. Okay, okay. By the way, for those of you new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. We test a bunch of weird stuff on this channel. Sometimes we test resin things. Sometimes we just comment on them. Click on all notifications while you're there. Just to be clear, I don't have anything against Crayola. I'm just testing things because I'm a curious little fella. Are you sure about that? In the trash! In the trash! <laughs> In the trash! Are you a curious little fella? Cause that, that means we can get along. So before we move on, let's also see what kind of scribble scrubbies... Oh, did I say it right? <gasps> I think I said it right. Let's see which ones we get. For those of you who don't know, what scribble scrubbies... <laughs> such a struggle is a Crayola product that is basically a toy you get to color rewash and color again they have a huge line of these products and it's basically become a very important staple in their product line however I did have some uh, interesting things to say about it I feel like this kit for me would go in the trash and we can get any of these animals here but let's not delay let's see what we get inside Oh, we also get markers. Very nice. And this one is a wiener dog. So we have a wiener dog. Very interesting pose. There you go, puppy. Very cute. I think there's still a marker in here. Oh, no. We get a washing brush. All right, puppy, I'm just going to go ahead and put you just a little there. Next we have, is that another dog? Can I pet that? Oh, it's a kitty cat. Do they even have names? They do. So this cat's name is Missy. This dirge name is Mika? Micah? Something like that. And what colors do we get? Are these the same colors? No, but we do get a similar orange. This time we're getting a pink instead of a green. And a brush. Brushes are the same color. And the last victim is going to be another wiener dog. No! I expected so much more than just doubles of the same thing when we could have gotten one of 12. And the colors are exactly the same. We get the green and the orange. Very original Crayola, thanks for nothing. And the brush. Okay, let's ruin some stuff. Our first victim. Crayola Pipsqueak Washable Markers. These are extremely popular. Now, I know some of you might want to say, But Jackie, this is for skin and clothing only washable. Stop it. When I get crayons, I'm not worried that they're going to get on my skin, because heck, even ink comes off of your skin, nor my clothing, because they're stain removers. But I'm more curious about desks and walls, because that's, that's where usually the most damage occurs, right? 
So if that's what you're curious about, that's what I'm about. A lot of my childhood memories have to do with Crayola and coloring and coloring books and all that kind of stuff, but have they actually improved on their recipe? That's, that's the question. And trust me, I'm as worried as you are, because that means I have to repaint my walls if it doesn't work. That's how much dedication I have. So make sure you leave a thumbs up. <laughs> Alright. I'm probably gonna need that later, but we'll focus on consequences for future Jackie, not present Jackie. And so we're going to test out three different colors. I know that usually red is the most aggro, but we're gonna go with green and blue as well. Am I gonna regret putting this on my desk? Oh, red! Why did red move? I do not know. Why do Crayola products wanna move on their own? I do not know. What's going on? It's the Crayola ghost. Oh, oh, there, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I think that's the Crayola ghost. And we're going to start with the green one, and we're just going to write Pip Squeak. P I P cheat cheat. Where's my cheat cheat? Oh, there's there's a dash. Dash squeaks. Oh, I have to say this is very nice to write with. It glides very smoothly. <laughs> if I were a young person, I would 100% do this on a desk. And here we go with red. And last but not least, oh, that one is nice. I like I like what I see here. Pip squeaks. Mm-hmm. A little bit of color. Let's highlight that squeaks and see how that looks. <laughs> Cringing. Oh, but you think I'm a reasonable per reasonable person? I can't even say reasonable. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, but you think I'm a reasonable person, huh? Let's go ahead with orange, purple, and heck, let's go with red again. Let's go to my wall. Yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> Alright, so this is normally here my background, so we're going to go just a little bit up here and do our little dabbles. See? Right, right there. You won't see it on my background, just in case. Alright, so let's go ahead with hip right here. Nice and big. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Squeaks. This is really nice on my wall. Honestly, this feels good. I want to do this again. And why not? Let's just do a kitty cat face because, I mean, what's, what's the point <laughs> of doing this? If we're not gonna draw, right? There we go, here's a kitty cat. Trust me when I'm saying I'm dying on the inside. <laughs> and here is a lovingly worn white, white shirt. And let's go ahead and put a little bit of pink on top and blue. You know what, we like, we like them colors because why not? Also, I may or may not want to confess that this shirt is not mine and it's still technically being worn by someone else, so I'm sorry, Pat. If you're watching this, next time, make sure you put your shirt in the washer, not next to it. <laughs> no mercy. All right, now that we have all three spots, desk, wall, cloth, I'm going to go ahead and dab a little bit on one of the Scrooby Squabbles. And now let's move on to paint. We're going to do all of the washing at the end so we can see the comparison and how embedded they become. And don't worry, I will leave them as long as the other sitting there. Oh, and just for comparison's sake, we're also going to use the crowns they provided us. So we're just going to make those angry eyebrows up here. And now we have... Silly Sense Paints, also by Crayola. I mean, obviously, this whole video is just Crayola dedicated. I've had both good experiences and absolutely terrible experience with Silly Sense from Crayola. In a previous video, my sister, Sika, and myself reviewed quite a few that were supposed to smell good, and they ended up smelling like absolutely nothing. And I guess that's probably why they ended up at the dollar store. If you're interested in that video, I'll link it down below. And I do have an unhealthy obsession with wanting to sniff everything, including glues and paint paints, but that's because they're supposed to smell good. And if anyone is to blame, it's Crayola. That's all I'm saying. If you're gonna make something sniffable and smell good, I'm gonna sniff it 100%. Let me know in the comment section below if you actually do sniff craft and art supplies. And as we can see on the box, it does show that we should be getting uh, full flavors. <laughs> don't, eat it, don't eat it. That's my next step. Edible art supplies. Do they make those? If they do, let me know. We have cherry, orange, pineapple, green apple, blueberry, and fruit punch. I personally never really understood the scent of blueberry, because every time I sniff blueberries, they really smell like nothing. It's only synthetic companies that make synthetic blueberries, because they really don't smell like anything, to me anyways. All right, let's 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 see what we got. That does look pretty fruity. Oh, it smells like pineapple. I'm wondering if they just spritzed the inside though. We're gonna actually sniff the paint itself. All right, let's go ahead and start with green apple. What is this? Oh, some extra leakage of paint. And I have you know, I have a pretty good schnoz. It smells quite a bit of things. Oh, it's not even sealed. Okay, let's go. Oh, 
Oh, that smells good. It has this remnants of like a apple shampoo, if that makes sense. Oh, that is nice. But there is the after smell of paint, so don't don't sniff too hard. After a few pots of paint, watch me be like, oh, oh. This, this is nice. This is really nice. Oh, oh unicorns. I like that. Let's continue with the basic scents that it's really hard to mess up. Next one is orange and no. <coughs> what is this? I think I lost a few brain cells. Why did I pause between what is this? Let's hear that again. What is this? This is orange. Let's try that again. <coughs> Why do I go in for a second and third sniff? These, oh wow. You know when you light a match and then you blow it out and then there's that smoke scent? That's what this smells like. Gross and it just hits you right in the lungs. I do not like this. This is not orange. Let me shake it and see maybe the scent is somewhere at the bottom. Doesn't say so. Let's go for sniff number three. <coughs> Yeah, it definitely still has that like smoky acid scent. No, absolutely no for orange. No, you would think that would be the easiest scent for them to get. <sighs> oh, the salt. You know what that means. Up next, we have cherry. I'm actually surprised they didn't go with strawberry since it's the easiest scent that we should be able to get. Now I'm scared. Oh, yeah. Eh. Yeah, so there is a cherry scent to it, but the after smell is definitely much stronger than the apple, but it is there. Pineapple is next on our list. I'm not a huge fan of either pineapple or pineapple juice, but hey, give me watermelon, I will love you, and I may become overly dependent if you supply me with watermelon on a regular basis. That's just facts. And, okay. Same as the cherry, we have this fruity scent, so we do smell a bit of a pineapple scent here, but the after smell is kind of gross, but it is there. Nowhere near orange's grossness. Now for apparently blueberry. What does blueberry smell like? It just smells like blue sweetness. Okay, this one doesn't have a gross after scent. It just smells like a less intense cherry. Very disappointing at best. I feel, I feel very overwhelmed right now. I feel very, very overstimulated. I don't know if I can talk anymore. I might need a mental break after these. Now we have for a punch. Can I smell anything? Let me, let me change my sniffage with some soap. Let's cleanse the nostril. Oh, yes, that's better. And for a punch. Why does everything smell like cherry now? Yeah, everything smells like cherry to a varying degree. Weak cherry, strong cherry, <laughs> strong Jackie. <laughs> Um, no, no. I would say the only winner in this scent competition would be apple, and the obvious loser is going to be orange, and all the rest have this varying degree of cherry. Why? <laughs> so if I had to rate these in terms of the smell alone, not the paint, I would say probably a 2 on 10. All right, time to um, paint on my desk and the wall. All right, so let's go ahead and start with our, oh my God, camera, can't calm down. Let's start with our cherry. Is this a bubble? Ooh, bubble. <laughs> Is it gonna pop? How long before you pop? I don't, I don't wanna spill, come on. All right, let's, let's just do it manually and there we go. All right, so let's take a nice paintbrush and let's write cherry. Oh, oh, that is very streaky. It has this chalkiness to it. Cheap cherry. <laughs> and let's go ahead and do, oh, oh, hang on, a little bigger. Just blue, three letter blue for blueberry. And then the next question over here is, does it smell like blueberry cherry? I think yes, but I think I'm starting to get dizzy. I'm getting dizzy from smelling all this paint. And for our lovely wall, we're not going to try and make any sense of it. We're just gonna have fun with this and see where this goes. I mean, if it ain't about creativity, I don't want it. Just put paint right here. <laughs> and on here, let's just go ahead and clean our brush because there's just too much gunk on there. And use our nice green. <laughs> and of course, let's go ahead and get our little pipsqueak. Oh, that is nice. That is nice coverage mentioned at the beginning of today's video, we are sponsored by Sophie and Toffee's Elves Box. For those of you who are really interested in getting into resin but don't know where to start, Sophie and Toffee's Elves Box makes it easy for you because they show you tutorials and they partner up with YouTubers for tutorials. You can always check their Instagram for more information. Not to mention, the molds that they use in there are curated and also exclusive to them. Let's make something with a stained glass box. 
a stained glass lantern. Let's take our resin and pour 60 ml. 30 so far. Part B. Down you go. Stirry stir. Let it sit for 10 minutes. Big bubbles be gone. And now all we have to do is wait 8 hours. 60 ml isn't enough. More like 65. And now we're gonna unmold it. Just a little bit of struggle, but we got it. And now we're gonna go ahead and draw something random. Time to shine. Time for colors. Oh, schnutz. That's a lot. <laughs> of course, you can do all the way around, but we'll stop right here. Aziz, light. Ooh. And now the Elves box has express shipping for only $4 more, which means that you'll get your box within five working days. This month's box theme is board games. You'll be getting nine exclusive molds and of course enough resin. So if you're looking for something fun to do while you're staying at home, crafting is definitely one of them. Again, check the link down below. Use the code NERDY3 for $3 off your first subscription. Thank you, Sophie and Toffee, for sponsoring today's video. And now for... Crayola crayons, ultra washable. Oh wait, ultra clean. <laughs> washable crayons. Crayola crayons are basically their flagship. Every, almost everyone, no generalization here if you haven't, no judgment, none whatsoever. But almost everyone has used a crayon at some point in their life, whether it's Crayola or not, mm, that'll depend where you're from. But I'm really excited for these, especially I do have regular crayons from Crayola. So I want to see how well these ones compare. I'm not sure if they're going to write on cloth, but we're gonna try anyways. But first things first, you can't have crayons without sniffing them. I mean, look at the waxy goodness. Look at them. Look at that. Oh my god. Ew. Why? Why? Okay, you know the nice smell of waxiness that comes with crayons? <laughs> These don't have it. I'm not sure what they smell like, but probably like musky paper or musty paper. It smells old. Why does Crayola like disappointing me? Hmm? Don't take something I loved and turn it into something that would go in the trash. All right. <laughs> Oh no, don't fall. There you go. And side note, the fact that these are ultra clean, ultra clean, apparently is supposed to come off of desks and walls too. That's what we're here for. To make sure that I waste my material and you don't. So here is our super washable and our regular one. We're going to test them against each other. We're going to write, oh, that does not write really well. Part of me is a little disappointed, but it does look much more saturated on camera, to be fair, kind of like that. And let's take something of the same pigment. And here we go with regular. This one is way waxier and a lot less saturated. So it'll be, it'll be curious. And of course, let's go with super. Oh my God. Oh, that is scary. That writes really really well. So we have super and regular. Oh my god, this is gonna be- <laughs> I am ruining my wall for you. Now let's see how it does on cloth. I- oh, I didn't think it would. Interesting. Okay, so here is our super washable. Let's just put crayon. That's gonna be tough. Crayon. Oh my god, that's hard. <laughs> And here are the regulars, which yes, oh my god, that is some nice pigments on clothing. I did not expect that. I will put an arrow and just put regular. Super and regular. We'll have the left paw as super and this paw here as the regular. Oh wow, it writes very nicely. And our next one is... Crayola watercolors. Again, these are washable. I remember having these as a little grain and even in the mini brands at some point when I unboxed it, I got a little one of these. They're classics. And of course they come in an array of colors. And it's basically a really pretty rainbow. The only color we don't, well, the only thing we don't get is white, probably because the more you dilute it, the lighter the color is. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to see how washable they are. So I'm going to go ahead and activate it. Let's do the spritz. Voila. Oh, you can see it active. Look at that purple. You go purple. That is really pretty. And no other colors doing that. All right, let's get to the surfaces. I'm really in love with this purple, so let's go ahead with that one. Oh my God, their brushes are so crap. I'm gonna take a better brush. There we go, that's better. There we go. Oh, interesting. Makes sense, it is water-based. And over here, nice juiciness there. <laughs> all right, let's just get all up in there. <laughs> Interestingly enough, it has some pretty good pigments going on the wall like that. Look at that. Very nice. And just so that we are clear, I'm not faking this. See, here's my background, and here it is. 
Here's the mess that I've made with each and every one of them. And I'm going to clean them at the same intervals. Our cloth surface. And I'm going to put a nice W for watercolor. And because we love our doggy, we're not... Oh, that does not want a color. Interesting. Let's put a little bit more water. And there's our derg. A little bit of brown right here. And we'll keep it focused in this area so that we can see if the color just spreads and gets gross. One hour later. So here we are one hour later and I'm going to make sure that each of them has had one hour to dry or to settle as we would like to say and we're going to start with just regular warm water and soap and a microfiber thing and if things get tough I do have a magic eraser uh, sponge so we'll see if that helps at all I don't know if it will but we'll try anyways so let's start with our wall. Dunky dunkies. All right, so let's go ahead and do just half here to see what it's like. And, oh, yeah, we're getting somewhere. I can still see the KS over here. Let's try a little bit more water. All right, let's keep going and see how well, oh no. I don't think that's gonna come off entirely. It's not too bad, but it still really is there. If the exposure's too high, I'll bring the camera closer so you can see. Magic eraser time. Oh no, that's worse. Oh no. <laughs> or is it? Or is it? Yeah, it's... Oh no. You know what? I think maybe the magic eraser is doing something. Let's just keep going. I think I take that back. <laughs> Here it is after five minutes of scrubbing, and you know what? It didn't do too bad, but you can definitely tell there was something here. Washability of pipsqueaks on the mall? I would say probably six and a half on ten. Soap and water washability? Okay. Definitely much better. I can almost not see it. Other than a few streaks here and there, this entire section is actually much cleaner than I expected. I would give this an 8 on 10. Now for the crayons, this is going to be interesting. I have zero faith that this is actually going to clean. Let me know in the comment section below if you think it will. It just looks like it's very comfortable on the wall. And let's start with Super. Okay. Wow. Wow. This is just soap and water. This is coming off pretty easily off the wall. I don't even see it. Holy carp, 10 on 10. And now let's see if it's a whole marketing scheme because now let's go for regular. And, um, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I messed up. I messed up. <laughs> this is not coming off. So in my opinion, regular Crayola is 100% a zero on 10. And now for washable watercolors. Let's see how washable you are. Oh, but can we still see it? That's pretty impressive, but you can still see some of the stains here. Let's keep cleaning. Wow, okay. I personally can't see it anymore unless you have better vision than I do, which is quite possible. Holy carp, 10 on 10. So really, the uh, Pipsqueaks washable markers are the worst in cleaning off the wall. And now it's time to tackle the desk. Suddenly I feel like this was overkill. I did not need to write this much. Why did I do this to myself? Can someone explain that to me? Look at my eyes, they're dead on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Again, sticking only with warm water and soap. Let's see how the pip squeaks do. If the wall was any indicator, this is gonna be a fail. Oh no! <gasps> My desk! Oh no! It's stained! Oh no! Or did it? <gasps> or did it? Alright, I am genuinely impressed. I did clean it out. The blue did come into the water, as you could see here. And just to let you know, this is an IKEA desk. So usually these things love to stain, but yeah, it didn't take. 10 on 10. Now we're on with the gouache paint pots. The uh, cherry and blueberry. It did, it did kind of smell like it. And... Oh! Say what? 10 on 10. Crayon time. We do have the super washable versus the regular. Seeing what happened on the wall, I have no faith in the regular leaving. So let's go for super. Easy peasy. Regular. Oh. The super is gone entirely. Regular, there's just a smidgen kind of hanging out here. I'm pretty sure if I scrubbed a little harder, it would come off. Let's or maybe even with a better cleaner. Both of them come off the desk, 10 on 10. So it's kind of a marketing scheme for desks, but 100% this super is great on walls. And now for watercolor, I know it looks wet, it's just glossy. Let's go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah, no no issues whatsoever. 10 on 10. All right, so now it's time for our squibble wibbles. Scribble rib, squib scribble scrubbles? What is it? Scribble scrubbies, I think. I'm not gonna check, because if I'm wrong, I'm gonna eventually learn. 
As a reminder, here's where everything is. We have the Pipsqueak markers. These are the markers that came with the actual figurine. Here we have the crayon, that's the, the super washable. Here we have the regular, and here we have the gouache blueberry paint. Let's scrub, scrubby dubby. They should have called it just scrubby dubby. All right, so I'm gonna start with the head first. We're gonna use the brush that they provided, and let's start with their, oh boy, with their actual, oh no, <laughs> the markers they actually gave. Oh, just so that you see, there's no contamination. There we go, still some stains, but let's go ahead and move our way downwards over here. I'm sorry, kitty cat. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> Hey, I think it's working in the same way. So for both markers, I don't know if you can see it, if it's picked up, there is a little bit of pink hanging around here and a little over here, despite the fact that I did scrub quite a bit, but it is mostly gone. Nine on 10, you can use it on these Scrooby Dubbies. Crayon time. Oh, look at you. Good for you coming off so quickly. Whatever the formula is for those super clean crayons is absolutely phenomenal. How about regular? Okay, they actually both seem to come off about the same thing, just using your nails a little bit more. And yeah, that's that's as good as it gets. Both of them, I would say a nine. Time for the paint. Let's see how that goes. Oh no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Or maybe, keep scrubbing. So for the gouache paints, I would say absolutely not. You will get a stained piece of scrubby dubbies. I would give it a two on 10. And now for the watercolor dog. How is that gonna do? That's gonna be a little stubborn, but it seems to move. And the answer is absolutely heck yeah. And just so you think I'm not switching it with the other dog, here's the other dog, see? And now for the paint on the shirt, I'm going to throw it into the next wash and let's see what it looks like. Here's the before and after. And voila! Here's a mini chart of whether it entirely cleans off of what surface and which material. Let me know in the comment section below what was your speculation. If you want to watch more Crayola shenanigans like me making candles out of Crayola and if that's even possible, make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch a review video, make sure you check down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.